Hello everyone, it's Michelle, and on this ARK Survival Evolve video, I'm going to be showing you my advanced guide to breeding. In this video, I'm going to be showing you that you can take a single stat, like melee damage, in a regular Rex, and you can mutate it over 20 times. In fact, I show you in this video that you can take melee damage and you can mutate it all the way up to 41 times. What you are looking at here is a very super mutated Rex in melee damage. Before we begin the video, I highly recommend to all of you out there that you watch my previous video on the best guide of breeding and stacking stat mutations, as it explains a lot. But before we begin, please consider liking, subscribing, and hit the bell icon for more notifications of when I upload next. It means a lot, as this video took me several months to complete. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started so that you too can breed your very own super, super mutated dinos. Before we begin, I highly recommend to all of you PC players out there who play ARK Survival Evolved to download an app called ARK Smart Breeding. It is one of the most useful stat calculators out there and gives you the most accurate representation of each kind of stat in your dino. And it tells you the best options for breeding as well too. You can try using Dodo decks, but it's not always accurate and sometimes can give misleading information. Unfortunately, for those of you who play console, you don't have the ability to download this app. But what you can do is download it on a PC at home, and then you can manually input the information, and you can get everything that you need from there. You can try using Dota decks, like I said, but it's not always accurate. I'm going to be putting a description in the box below so that you know exactly where to download Arc Smart Breeding, and I'm going to show you how to download it and how it's used. This is the site that you want to go to. I'm going to put a description in the box below, but you want to scroll down to where it says set up arcsmartbreeding.exe. Click on that, and in the bottom left, you're going to see a little arrow pointing up. Click on that as well. Hit open. And then you want to go ahead and click where it says more info, and then you want to click run anyway. Go ahead and select your language. Hit next. We want to keep that the same. We're not going to change any of this. Hit next. Next. And next again. And now we're going to go ahead and install. And we can launch it here if we want to. I'm going to go ahead and launch Arc Smart Breeder after on the desktop. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And there's my app on the left hand side. I'm going to move it in the center and there is our ARC Smart Breeding app. We're going to go ahead and open this now. This next bit is going to be extremely important. You need to go up to the top where it says settings, click on settings, and you need to go to the tab that says import exported. This is very important and you must set this up on PC. You need to click where it says add export folder. Click on the little folder icon and we have to find where we saved Arc Survival Evolved. So I'm going to go to this PC. I need to go to the drive where I have Arc downloaded. You need to go to where it says Steam Library. Go to Common. Click on Arc. Then go to Shooter Game. Then go to Saved and then go to Dino Exports. Click on that, that is very important. You can click on that little folder there and hit OK. And you wanna hit OK on this. This is a very important step and you must do this for this to work. The next thing you wanna do is load up Arc, go up to any dino, and I'm just showing you how this works. Go into its inventory, go to Options, and Export Dino. And you can see at the top the data for your MO Health 225 Rex has been exported. Now what we want to do is go ahead and open up Arc Smart Breeding. And this is the general layout of Arc Smart Breeding. It is not user friendly and it is going to take a minute for you to get used to this. The best way to go about this is playing around with it yourself. I'm going to go over this very quickly. I can make a separate video on this if you'd like. Just let me know in the comments below. You have different tabs up here towards the top. You have stat testing, extractor, library, pedigree, taming, etc. If you go to stat testing, you can manually input a creature stats. So this would be good for people who are playing on console. But if you're on PC, it automatically will put in the stats for you because we've exported the dino. So 
Let's go ahead and look at this real quick. We need to import our exported dyno. We need to bring in the stats of that Rex. So if you go up here to the top where it says import exported data, click on that. And you can see that my male original health Rex right here is ready to copy values to extractor. Go ahead and click that. And you can see that it pulled the stats of this dyno. It is very important to point out though that when you tame dinos in the wild, they naturally have stat points that are in them. This is natural, this is without leveling. So you can see that right here where it says wild level on the left, these are the stats of this dino. I have 46 points that were naturally put into health, which gives it a total of 11,000 in health. And it goes for every single stat. For stamina, I only had 30, and you can see that the green bar is a little bit lower because it's not that many points in stamina. You can see it for oxygen, food, weight, melee damage, and yes, even movement speed. There are wasted points in movement speed. So that is something that we will have to correct later on. Now, once you're here, you can also look on the right-hand side and it will tell you the name of the creature. But what we have to do now is we need to add this to our new library and save it. So go down towards the bottom where it says add new to library. Go ahead and click on that and it's going to automatically put us in the library tab here. What you want to do from here is go ahead and save this. This is important and we need to keep track of this. So go up to file and go to save. And I'm going to save mine here. I'm just going to call mine arc test. And there we go. So now this data is saved. And this is going to be important when you want to compare and breed animals together. In order for us to begin the very complicated process of mutating a single stat over 20 times, you first need to understand how chains work. I've already talked about how to mutate in a single chain up to 20 times in my previous video. So for this, we need to start with our 20 out of 20 stat mutated damage rex. And again, guys, if you do not know how to get to 20 out of 20 stat mutations, you need to watch my previous video because I'm going to be starting with my 20 out of 20 stat mutated damage rex. So what you see before me is my chain in melee damage here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you not only my 20 out of 20 melee mutated Rex here that you see before me, but I'm also going to be incorporating the other chains that I showed you as well in that previous video, which is my female stamina 20 out of 20 and my female health 20 out of 20. Both of these two in the back are going to come in handy towards the end of the video. So again, you need to know how chains work and you need to know the basics of mutating. So Let's go ahead up to our damage rex because in this video I'm going to be showing you that you can mutate over 20 times in melee damage. So what I'm going to do is get on this T-Rex here and first off I just want to recap with you all. This is my male. This is a male T-Rex here. If you go to show ancestors you can see that there are 20 stat mutations on one side. This is my 20 stat mutations in melee damage and you can see that the melee damage on this is quite high. And it all starts with your base rexes. I've gone over how to get a base rex in my previous video as well too. And again, you're going to have to start with your base rexes as well as your 20 out of 20 mutated rex. So it doesn't have to be melee damage. Whatever it is that you want to mutate yourself, this is where you're going to start. You have to start with a 20 out of 20. So here's my male. What I need to do is I need to put him in the dead center of all of my base females here. And again, my base females are nothing but combined wild rexes put together to create the best stats. And this is how I originally started my chain. I'm going to go ahead and throw out my, my T-Rex right here in the center. And there he is. So again, these all right here are my base females, and yes, they are female, and it's going to be very important for you to understand that the male has to breed with the females, and again, this is not new information, I've already talked about this. And remember, your base females have to be the same exact level with the same exact stats. 
over in the corner over here, I have a base male. And the reason why I have the base male over here over in the corner is because whenever I get a female mutation, I breed it with the male to convert it back to male. So let's go back to the center over here. This male right here, I'm going to go ahead to behavior, enable mating. My females are already turned on, so I don't have to worry about turning all of these on. I've already done that. So here's the thing. To get over 20 stat mutations in a Rex, this is going to be a complicated process because you're going to go through thousands and thousands of eggs. And I literally mean that. You will go through thousands of eggs. So you need to understand one thing. In order for you to get a stat mutation above 20, it has to go on a side that is empty, meaning that it has to go onto a side that is below 20. So, for example, if you look right now, you can see that I have 20 stat mutations here. Well, in the past, when you first start mutations, the random mutation that you get, whatever desired stat, could have gone on this side or this side because they were below 20. But because now it says 20 out of 20, I've reached maximum capacity, meaning that the mutation has to be on this side here because it's lower than 20. Once it goes above 20, it cannot mutate on that side. So if you think about it, you have half of the chance that you would have normally gotten to get your mutation. So that's why I say you will go through thousands and thousands of eggs. You will go through double the amount that you normally would have. So it's basically the same exact process that I showed you in my previous video. The male has to breed with all of the base females here. And I'm going to show you every single step and I'm going to show you that it is a possible thing. So remember, every mutation gets two levels. So when this male breeds with all these females and they lay eggs, the level that I have to look for in order for me to know that I have done this correctly is going to be 311, 311, because that is two levels higher than my male damage that you see before me here. So the baby that I need to look for when I hatch this up needs to be level 311 with melee damage that is greater than 613. So 311 with melee damage higher than 613. I'm going to go through this entire process with you all and show you that it is a real thing. So I will see you when we get our babies. And there is our 311, and the damage is 625, so that's over 613. So it's a female, so we're going to options, change name. We're going to call this one 21 out of 40, because I'm going to go up to 40 mutations. I'm going to have a little surprise for you at the end. But if you go to show ancestors, I just want to point this out to you all. Um, when you look at the ancestors on this one, you're going to notice that it says patrilineal 20, and then on the mother side, it says 1 out of 20. Now, this is perfectly acceptable to have the stats on different sides, and in fact, once we get a male out of this, um, you will see that the, the stats go onto one side in particular. Now, here's the thing. We need to let her grow up, but remember, this is a female. So it doesn't actually make sense to stick with a female. It makes sense to go for a male. And for those of you who would argue, well, why not just keep breeding the dinos until you get a male? You have to keep in mind that it is all down to chance. And when you are going above 20 mutations, it actually is a bit more difficult to, for you to get the mutation. We're going to make her grow up real quick. All right, so this is my base male, and this is my mutated female. So we need to switch this over to a male, and I'll explain why in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and turn on the female, and we've already turned on the male. She's going to lay some eggs out. Um, we're going to go over here and turn this male off because we no longer need him to mate anymore. In fact, we can go ahead and cryo him up. Now here's the thing. We have 28 
we have 28 base females. That's 28 chances of them laying eggs. And you can see that they already have a few eggs underneath of them as it is right now. And if you are experienced breeders by this point, you should know that the more females you have, the more eggs that you're going to get, the better chance for you to get your mutation because you have more eggs coming out, more chances. Well, here's the thing. If I keep the female and I just breed it with the base male, I'm only getting one egg at a time. And depending on what your server settings are, it, one egg at a time is, is very slow. And yes, you can argue that I can breed and keep going for my male mutation instead of getting this female here, but you gotta keep in mind that it's all down to random chance. And the chances of you getting the next mutation, although is possible, well, you could get it in another female. So why not just switch this over to a male? You already have the mutation. You just have to switch it over. It's just one little extra step. So that's what I'm doing here now, is I'm breeding up the female just like last time in my last video with the base male, guys. And what I'm going to be looking for is a male T-Rex that is the exact same level as the female that I see in front of me because we need to switch it over to a male so that we can breed it with all of those females over there where I'm looking. So we're gonna let her lay a few eggs and then we're gonna go ahead and get our male converted. There's our male, option, change name. Male 21 out of 40, and it's the same level as the female that we just got. We can cryo him up. We can put him in the center of all the females. Now, since he's grown up now, what we can do is we can breed him with all of the females. Behavior enable mating. And again, the male, the stat mutated male is going to breed with all the, the base females here. But when we go to look at his ancestors, you're going to notice that all of the mutations are on the left-hand side on the matrilineal. So here's the reason why I said it's a little bit more difficult to get the mutation. As before, before we had the 20 out of 20, the mutation could have come on the patrilineal or the matrilineal side. But because now the matrilineal is above 20 on this side, it cannot mutate on this side any further. Therefore, it can only mutate on the patrilineal side. So you're basically decreasing your chances of getting that mutation by 50%. So yes, you will go through many, many eggs to get to this point. And progressing past 20 is going to be a bit of a grind. Unfortunately, you will go through many different, many, many eggs, like I said. Now, we're going to let this breed up with all the base females. And the level that we're going to be looking for next is 313. 313, two levels higher, with melee damage over 625. So, I will see you when we get that mutation. Oh, look at that, that purple one. 313, let's claim it. Let's see if it has the stats. And that's it, guys. So, that is my next... Mutation and damage, it's over 625 because it's 637. It is a male, luckily for us. Now, when we go to show ancestors, this is very important to note. Do you see how it says 21 on one side, and then on the matrilineal side, it says 1 out of 20? That is what is supposed to happen with this. Now, I will say that I've gone over a thousand eggs just to get this mutation. And I'm not joking when I say that. Over a thousand eggs. Let's go ahead and put this next to the other one. So I want to show you some comparisons between this one and the one we currently have. Come over here. We can turn the 21 out of 40 off. So behavior, disable mating. Let's go ahead and throw this baby out. Let's rename him real quick. Again, this is our 20, this one here is our 22. So options, change name. Male, 22 out of 40 in damage. 
And as you mutate, you're always going to have, from now on, you're always going to have one random mutation on one side, and you're going to have the higher level on another. It doesn't matter if it's on the matrilineal or the patrilineal, but just to compare to the previous one, so you guys get a better understanding, remember, this is my 21, it has 625 in damage, and then my 22 obviously has an increase. When you look at the ancestors on the previous one, you're going to notice that it has 21 on one side. Now, when this one mutated, it could not get the extra mutation on the matrilineal side, so it had to go on the other side. But because this one was a female first, that's why the stats got pushed onto one side here. And when we got our baby, since it is a boy, 21 out of 20 is on one side and 1 out of 20 is on the other. Now, we're going to let this little guy grow up here, our 22 out of 40. We're going to let him grow up, and then we're going to mate him with all of our base females. The next level that we need to look for when we get our next melee mutation is going to be level 315, two levels higher than this one, so level 315 with melee damage over 637. So, I will see you guys after we get the next baby. There's a 315 here. Imprint that. And there we go. So, it's a female, so we are going to have to convert it over to a male. But you can see that the melee damage is now 649, so it did increase. Again, this is a female. It is the right level. If we go to show ancestors, again, this is what's going to happen. Before, it said 21 on one side and one on the other, but again, guys, the mutation went over here to this side. Do you see the matrilineal? You see how you have one on one side? This is where this baby mutated. So when we hatched out this egg and we got the mutation, the other mutations that were on this side got pushed over top of the patrilineal. So you can see that the mutation went onto the matrilineal here, and again, we need to convert this over to a boy. But first, let's go ahead and rename her. Options change name. Damage, female, 23 out of 40. Let's go ahead and get her cryoed up, and we'll get her next to our base male. Now that our female 23 over 40 has finally grown up, we can go ahead and set her to enable mating. Our base male is currently turned on as well too. Remember we have a mutated female, so we need to breed it with the base male. The eggs that we're going to be looking for are the same exact level, 315, except we're looking for this in a boy. So we need to get a male T-Rex, same exact level as her. There is a small possibility that we can get the mutation off of her because she is a mutated dino and she's still breeding with the base. So we might, very slim chance, get the next mutation off of her. Let's go ahead and get a few eggs. We'll hatch them up and then we continue the process. All right, there's a 315 here. Climb that. It's a female. Let's claim the other one. Female as well. There's one over here, and that's our male. So go to options, change name, and remember this is the same exact level as the female that it came from, and it's still the same exact mutation. Male, 23 out of 40 in damage. Something interesting to point out as well too, because we had a transferred over from a female to a male, and you go to show ancestors, all of the random mutations do go on one side, and again, that's fine, as long as the other side is not past 20 mutations. So the next, the next baby that we get is going to have to mutate on the other side. It cannot mutate over top of 23. So let's go ahead and get him out, and we're going to let him grow up. Now that our male 23 out of 40 damage has finally grown up, we can go ahead and turn him on mating. And again, because he's our mutated male, he's going to breed with all of our base females. 
the level that we need to look for for our next mutation must be 317 and the melee damage must be higher than 649. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward until we get the baby that we're looking for. Alright, there's 317 here. Let's see if we can claim it. And that's the mutation. It is a female, so unfortunately we are going to have to change it over. Let me just get these dinos out of the way so that I can claim it properly. Alright. So we got ourselves the mutation. It is a female. But I will say it is a lovely shade of pink. Go to options, change name. And this is our female, 24 out of 40 in damage. And again, its damage is increasing. It is going into its damage stat. If you go to show ancestors... Again, 23 on one side and one on the other. So 23 plus 1 is 24. So we have 24 melee mutated stats. Cryo her up. Come over to this side. And because it's a female, we have to breed it with a base male. So throw the, the melee mutated female out. We need to let her mature. Make sure that she has plenty of food. We don't want her dying. I'm going to go ahead and turn her on mating now. And here's the thing. Again, she's female. She's the melee mutated stat. She needs to breed with a base male. We need to let her grow up. But the, what we need to do is convert her into a male. Same exact level. Again, same exact level. So we're going to get her to grow up. We're going to get some eggs off her. And the baby that we need to look for is a male level 317, with the same exact damage, same exact stats. I'm going to go ahead and get my mail, and then we can continue the process. One good point, though, is to make sure you shut off your previous dino that you had over here. I went ahead and cryoed mine up already. It's a good idea to go ahead and collect these eggs and get rid of them, or you can turn it into kibble. Your choice. couple 317s in here. Let's see if any of them are a boy. That's a girl. I'd like a pink one if I can. And there we go. It's a male, so option change name. And remember, this is our 24th mutation in damage, in melee damage because it came from the same mother, the same exact level, and remember, we were just converting the girl into a boy. So now that we have our boy, let's cryo him up. We can go over here to the other female base Rexes. I'm going to put him out here. And we're going to let him grow up. And once he has grown up, we can breed this melee mutated boy with all the base females. And we can continue for our next mutation, which will be 25 out of 40. And the level that we're going to be looking for for this one is going to be 319 with melee damage that is higher than 660. Alright, so let's let this grow up. We'll get a few eggs and then we will get our 319. 319 and there we go that is our next mutation and it happens to be in a male which is super lucky we go up to it options change name this is our male 25 out of 40 and damage because the damage is 672 it's higher than 660 Go to show ancestors, and again, you can see that there is a reoccurring pattern that there's 24 mutations on one side, so it's capped over here, and then there's one mutation on the other side. This is exactly what we need, so we can go ahead and cryo him up. We can get rid of these ones, and then we continue the process. We can go ahead and throw out the boy that we just got. It's a baby, so we need to let him grow up first. We don't need the old one, so let's cryo him. 
We're going to let this boy here grow up. And when he's matured, he's going to breed with all the base females. And then the level that we're going to be looking for next is going to be 321 with melee damage that's higher than 672. So, let's get that egg. 321 here. And there's our mutation. It's a female. It is level 321 like we need. And the melee damage is 684. Let's go ahead and cryo her up. And we're going to put her next to the base male. Make sure that you name your female as well too. So go to options, change name. Female 26 out of 40 in damage. If you look at her ancestors, you can see that she has the one random mutation on one side and then the 25 on the other. Again, the melee damage is increasing. We're going to let her mate with the base male and we're going to convert her into a boy. So we're going to look for the same exact level, 321, from these two just in a boy. Remember, the mutated dino has to breed with the base male. And again, there is a slim, slight chance that we could get the next mutation. So there is a small chance we could get the next one off of these two, but it's very rare. Let's go ahead and convert her over and then we can begin the process for our next mutation. 321 and it's a male. So we need to go to options, change name. M, 26 out of 40 in damage. And again, if you look at its ancestors, you can see 26 on one side. And you see the 26 all on one side because remember that this came from the female and we had to convert it over to a boy. So all of the stat mutations went to one side because we had to convert it from female to male. Let's go ahead and cryo him up. We're going to put him in the dead center. And when this male here, when this baby male grows up all the way, we're going to breed him with all of our base females. And the next level that we need to look for, for our next mutation and damage, needs to be level 323. And the damage must be higher than 684. Here's a 323. Three. And that's the mutation. It's a female, so we can go ahead and rename her. Options change name. Female, 27 out of 40, so you have 26 random mutations on one side, one random mutation on the other. The melee damage is increasing because it went from 680 to 696. We can go ahead and cryo her up and we need to convert her into a boy. So let's go ahead and do that. Throw out our female. Behavior enable mating. As soon as she grows up, she's going to mate with our base male because she's our mutated female. And we are going to look for the same exact level as her, just in a boy. 323 in a male. Same exact stats. There is a slight chance we could get the next mutation, but again, it is extremely rare. But for now, we're just going to look for the male 323. 323. And it's a male. So go to options, change name. Male, 27 out of 40 in damage. And when you look at the ancestors, they're all on one side. 27. 
We can cryo him up. And we can take this boy over to the pit where the base females are located. This is our old 26 out of 40 in the middle here, so we can get rid of him. Just throw, throw this one out. And cryo up this one here. Once this little guy here grows up, the next, the next level that we need to look for when he breeds with all these base females, we need to look for a level 325 with damage higher than 696. So a 325, two levels higher, with damage higher than 696. 325. And there is our next mutation, and thank goodness it's in a boy. 27 on one side, and one on the other. This is our 28. So go to options, change name. Alright, so we can go ahead and cryo him up, and we're going to throw him in the center with all of the ladies. Let's throw our baby out. 28 out of 40. We can cryo up the old male because we need him no more. When this little guy grows up, because we got a boy, we can breed him with the base females. And the next level that we're going to be looking for is 327 with melee damage that is higher than 708. 327. And there is our next mutation. 719. It's over 708. And it is 327. If you go to Show Ancestors and look at that, you have 28 on one side, one on the other. So this makes us 29. Options. Change name. Mail 29 out of 40 and damage. Let's go ahead and cryo him up. Let's throw the new baby out. 29 out of 40. Again, these are his stats. When he grows up, the next level that we need to look for is 329 with melee damage that's higher than 719. While you're at it, go ahead and cry up the old one because we no longer need him. We'll let this little guy here grow up, and the next level again is 329 with melee damage over 719. So I will see you when we get that egg. 329 here. And that is our next mutation. It's in a female, so that's that's our next mutation. It's in a female, so we're going to have to convert it to a boy. But if we go to Show Ancestors, 29 on one side and one on the other, this makes 30. Options change name. Female, 30 out of 40, and damage. Go ahead and throw out our female. And remember, because she is the stat mutated dino, she is going to breed with a base male. Stat mutated female, breeding with a base male. We're going to let her grow up. And we need to get an egg off of her, but the egg that we're going to get off her should be the exact same level. 329. We're going to look for a boy, though. So again, when she hatches eggs, or when she lays the eggs and we go to hatch them, we're going to look for a level 329 just in a male. And again, there is a slim, slight, tiny possibility that we could potentially get the next mutation, which would be 331 over 731. But again, for right now, we're just going to look for the same exact level as her. There's our male. So options, change name. This is our male 30 out of 40 in damage. We can cryo him up to get him out of here. He's cryoed up. So our female did give us the male that we were looking for. Same exact level. I'm going to run over here to the center, throw out the new boy. He can grow up now. We no longer need the 29 that is in the center, so let's cryo him to get rid of this one. And when this one here grows up, we're going to look for our next stat mutation in damage 
The level that we must look for is level 331 with melee damage that is higher than 731. 331. And that is our next mutation, guys, because it is 743. It's over 731, so let's go ahead and claim this. It is a boy, which makes it very good for us. Go to Options, Change Name. Male, 31 out of 40 in damage. We can go ahead and cryo him up, and we'll put him with all of the base females. Let's go ahead and throw out our new male. 31 out of 40. Let's go ahead and look at his stats real quick. And again, the damage has increased. This is our other male, the 30 out of 40. And again, you can see that the stat increased. We don't need him anymore, so we can cry up the old one. Let's go to show ancestors on the new one, the 31 out of 40. And you can see that there's 30 on one side, one on the other. Now, when we go for the next mutation, the level needs to be 333 with melee damage that's higher than 743. So once this little guy grows up, we can make, mate him with all of the base females here. Remember, mutated needs to breed with all of the bases. And again, we're going to look for a 333 with melee damage higher than 743. 333. And that is our next mutation. The damage is higher than 740. It's on 755. And it's boy, which is perfect, so we can go ahead and rename him. So go to options, change name. Male, 32 out of 40 in damage. And when you look at the ancestors, you can see that there's 31 mutations on one side on the patrilineal and one mutation on the matrilineal. Let's go ahead and cryo him up, and we can put him in the center of all of the base females. Let's go ahead and throw out our new baby. And there he is, 32 out of 40. We no longer need the old one, so we can cryo him up. When this boy here grows up, we're going to be looking for our next stat mutation in damage. The level that we need to look for is level... 335 with melee damage that is higher than 755. We're going to let him grow up here and this stat mutated male is going to breed with all of our base females. 335 and that is our next mutation. The damage is higher than 755 because it is 766. If you get a show ancestors you can see that there's 32 on one side and one on the other, so this makes 33. And it is a boy, so that is good for us. We're going to go ahead and rename him. Options, change name. Male, 33 out of 40 in damage. We're going to cryo him up, and we can throw out the new boy. We don't need the old one anymore, so we can cryo him up. Once this baby right here grows up, we can breed him with all of the base females. The next level we will be looking for is level 337 with melee damage that is higher than 766. 337. And that is our next mutation. It's a female. It is a twin, so I'm going to check its twin and see if that one is a boy. And it is. That is very lucky. So I'm going to take the male off of this one, because I don't want to convert a female to a male since I already have the male here. And if you go to show ancestors, it is 33 on one side, one on the other, so this makes 34. And again, the damage is higher than 766, so this is our next mutation. Let's go ahead and rename it. Options, change name. Male, 34 out of 40 in damage. Let's go ahead and cryo him up. We can throw out the new baby. And when he grows up, he's going to mate with all of the base females. 
put some food in him. And the next level that we're going to look for is going to be 339 with melee damage that's higher than 778. 339. And that is our next mutation. It's in a boy and the damage is above 788. So we can use this one here. Like I said, it's a boy. If we go to the mutations, you can see 34 on one side and one on the other. So this makes 35. So go to options, change name. Mail 35 out of 40 and damage. We can go ahead and cryo him up. We can throw out our new boy. And there's our 35 out of 40 in damage. Let's go ahead and cry up the old one because we no longer need him. And remember, since we got a boy mutation, it needs to breed with all the base females. Go ahead, behavior, enable mating. And he is going to breed with all of our base females. The next level that we need to look for must be level 341 with melee damage that is greater than 790. 341. And that is our next mutation. The damage is 802. If you go to show ancestors, there's 35 on one side and one on the other. This makes 36. Unfortunately, it is in a female, but we can change it over very quickly. Let's go to options, change name. Female, 36 out of 40 in damage. 35 plus 1 is 36. And again, the melee damage is increasing. Let's go ahead and cryo her up. We can throw the female out. Now, because this is a female, it needs to breed with a base. So it's breeding with our base male here, and we need to let her grow up first. But remember, guys, that we are going to be looking for the exact same level as her. So a level 341, just in a boy. And again, there is a slim, slight possibility that we could potentially get the next mutation, which would be 343 with melee damage higher than 802. But again, for right now, we're just going to convert her into a boy so that we can put the boy in the center with all of the females over there. It's a good idea as well, too, to make sure that you turn off your male over here so that you don't have a bunch of eggs just laying about. I'm going to go ahead and cryo him now. I'm going to wait for that female, 36 out of 40, to grow up. I'll mate her with the male over there, and then we can get our boy. 341. And it's a boy, so we can go ahead and rename him. Male 36 out of 40 damage, because remember we had to breed the female and with the base male to get a male. So you can see that all of the mutations are on one side now. We have 36 over 20 on one side, and that's all in melee damage. We can go ahead and cryo him up now. And we can put him in the center with all of the other base females. So we have our male, and we need to breed it with the base females now. Just the same as before. So go ahead and throw him out here. When he grows up, he's going to mate with all these ladies. And the level that we will be looking for out of the eggs is 343 with melee damage that is higher than 802. So 343 three, with melee damage higher than 802. 343. Three. And that is our next mutation right there, guys. It's over 808. It's over 800, so it's at 813 now. If you go to show ancestors, you see 36 on one side, one on the other, so this makes us 37. It is a male, luckily for us, so we can go to options, change name. Male 37 out of 40 in damage. We can go ahead and cryo him up now. And we can put him amongst all of our base females. We don't need the old male anymore, so we can go ahead and cryo him up. Get rid of him. Throw out the new boy. And here's our 37 out of 40. Show you the ancestors real quick. Again, 36 one side, one on the other. 
and the melee damage is increasing every single time. Now the next level that we need to look for to go for 38 out of 40 is going to be 345 with melee damage that is greater than 813. And that is our next mutation. It isn't a female unfortunately, but it's over 813. It's 825 right here. Show ancestors. 37 on one side and one on the other makes 38. So go to options, change name. Female 38 out of 40 in damage. Go ahead and cryo her up. And we're going to put her next to the base male. Throw out our female. 38 out of 40. The, the female that is stat mutated is going to breed with our base male. Go to behavior, enable mating. She needs to grow up first though before we can get some eggs off of them. And remember, the egg that we're going to be looking for, or the baby that we're going to be looking for, needs to be the exact same level as the mother. So 345 is what, what, what we're going to look for, but it needs to be in a male. So 345 male. And again, there is a slight slim possibility we could get the next stat mutation, which would be level 347 with melee damage greater than 825. But for now, we're going to look for a level 345 just in a male. 345 and it's a male so go to options change name it's still 38 out of 40 it's just a male let's go ahead and cryo him up and we're going to throw him out in the center of all of the base females let's throw him out There's our new baby boy, and we can cry out the old one, because we no longer need him. When this one here grows up, it's going to mate with all of our base females surrounding us here. The level that we need to look for, for our 39 out of 40 mutated statin damage, needs to be level 347, with melee damage greater than 825. 347... Alright guys, and this is our next stat mutation. Luckily it's in a boy, it's a level 347, and the melee damage is 837.3. If you go to show ancestors, you can see 38 on one side and one on the other. We need to go ahead and rename this. Go to options, change name. Male 39 out of 40 in damage. Go ahead and cryo him up as well. And we need to put him next to all of the base females. We can go ahead and throw out our 39 out of 40 male. We don't need the old one anymore, so go ahead and cryo him up and put him away safe. Now then, when this one here grows up, this boy right here, 39 out of 40, we need to be looking for a level 349 with melee damage that is greater than 837. And the next stat mutation will be our 40 out of 40. So let's go ahead and get some eggs. Remember, the base, uh, the base females are breeding all with the stat mutated male here. 349. And that is our next mutation, guys. Its melee damage has increased. So we can go ahead and keep this one. This is a boy. And guess what, guys? This is our 40 over 20 mutated stat <laughs> damage. Yes. That is over 40. I'm going to go ahead and rename him. Forty out of forty in damage. We can go ahead and cryo him up. And I'm going to show you something a little bit extra. Now here's the thing. I have my forty out of forty damage done. This is him right here. And again, just to show you the ancestors. Thirty-nine one side, one on the other. That makes 40 mutations in a single stat and damage, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now I thought to myself, could you go past 40? And simply the answer is yes, you can. You can go past 40 mutations in a single stat, just like the same that you can go past 20 in a single stat. In fact, I'm gonna show you that you actually can. I'm gonna do one last stat mutation with you all on camera to show you that it is possible and it is a real thing. So if technically I am looking for the next stat, the damage must be higher than 849 and the level will be 351. So, Let's let this boy here grow up. 
I'm gonna breed him with all of our base females, and I'm gonna get you the 351 in damage. 351. And there, guys, is a next mutation. It is in a boy, it is level 351, and if you go to Show Ancestors, you can see that there's 40 mutations on one side and one mutation on the other side. So yes, this does mean that this is our 41st stat mutation and damage. So change name. I'm gonna go ahead and cryo up this boy here and I'm gonna throw him back out to show you guys something. My 41 out of 40 damage is finally grown up and you can see that he's standing right here. And again, guys, if I go up to his stats and look in his inventory, you can see that his melee damage is very, very high. I'm actually quite happy with this Rex. And for those of you who are wondering, I could stop right here. I have 1 plus 40 equals 41 stat mutations and melee damage. Now, the level of this dino doesn't bother me at all, and it's not going to be a concern for something called max level dino cap, which is what I'm going to be showing you a little bit later. But... If you have other chains that you are breeding and you want to combine them together, then you have to be concerned about a couple of things. With this male 41 out of 40, I'm very happy with it, but I would also like to incorporate some of the other chains from my previous video that I made, such as health and stamina. I'm going to go ahead and pull those over, and remember guys, these what you are seeing before me are my chains. You need to start off with your base female and your base male to start the chains. And yes, the chains do take a while to make, and I highly recommend that you keep all of yours, and hopefully you kept all of yours from your previous video. So again, here is my stamina, and on my right is my health. I'm going to be using my 20 out of 20 chain in, in health. Bring this over. And I'm also going to be grabbing my 20 out of 20 in stamina. And just to show you real quick on the health, from 11,000, it went all the way up to 20,000. And I would like to have 20,000 health with 800 plus melee damage. That sounds quite good. And I'm also going to grab my stamina chain, 20 out of 20. I'm going to go ahead and pull these over, and then we can begin the next process. Like I said, guys, you can stop here, especially if you've gone over 20 mutations in a single stat and you're happy with all of the other stats. Again, I don't have to do the next few steps, but I'm going to anyway because I want to show you something that I encountered that was a problem that many of you might have to correct as well too later on, which is the level of your dino. But first, here's the thing. We're going to combine our 41 out of 40 damage with our other chains that we have done in the past. So over here is my female health 20 out of 20. And if you go up to its inventory and look at show ancestors, you can see that I have 20 stat mutations and this is all in health. On the right, you have the stamina, the female stamina 20 out of 20. And if you go to show ancestors, it says 19 one side, one on one side, that's 20. That's 20 mutations in stamina. So. I can now combine all of these stats together if I wanted to, but if you're happy, like I said, with the one stat mutation that's over 20 points and you're okay with this, just to make more of these exact same babies, all you would have to do is take the final product, the one that's over 20 stat mutations, and breed it with a base. And then all you would have to do is hatch out the same exact levels as the parent here, the one with the mutations, but I'm not happy with that, and I want to combine all of my stat mutation chains together. So this one here happens to be a male T-Rex. It's a male, and it has the 860 damage, and you can see that it has the 40 plus 1, 41 stat mutations in melee damage. What I'm going to be doing here is I want to go ahead and I want to combine all three of these dinos together, because again, this one has the best damage. This one has the best stamina. And this one here has the best health. To start this, I'm going to go ahead and combine my stamina, my female stamina, 20 out of 20, with the male, 41 out of 40 damage. So what you want to do is take him, move him a bit closer, go up to him, 
behavior, enable mating, and then you want to go up to the female stamina or whatever dino that you want to combine together, behavior, enable mating. We're going to go ahead and get a few eggs off of these guys and then we're going to combine them together and we will get our baby. Now it's important to realize that when we get the baby it has to have the high stamina. It has to have the 3906 stamina and it needs to have the high melee damage 860 because we're combining the best stats here. All of the other stats if you compare them between the parents are the same. Oxygen is the same, food is the same, health is the same, weight, and yes even the fixed movement speed wasted point stats. Let's go ahead and get a few babies off of these, we'll hatch them out, and we'll get the combined baby between the two. Alright, so the babies have gone ahead and hatched, and we can go ahead and look at them now. Now you're going to notice that there, there's a bunch of different levels that are going on here. 309, 391, and 351. What I recommend for you guys is go ahead and check them out. The 309s are not going to work for us because that is the same exact level as the 20 out of 20 stamina parent. So I'm not even going to go ahead and look at those. This level 351 will not work either. And you need to keep in mind that that is the same exact level too as the 41 out of 40 in damage, so that's not going to work either. What we have to do is we need to look for a baby that is level 391, and that happens to be right over here. And I know that I'm looking for a level 391 because the 351, that was the level for the 41 out of 40 in damage was, was 351, and then the 20 out of 20 was level 309. So we've gone up 20 stat mutations in stamina. So if you add 40 levels onto 351, that gives us 391. So I know right now that when I claim this one, 391, it is going to have both of the stats. So yeah, it does. This one has 3906 in stamina, and this one has 860. So this is the combined one. Now it is a female, I do kind of need a male here, so I'm going to go ahead and keep her anyway, and I'm going to look at this other 391. This one happens to be male, so we are lucky. We're going to go ahead and keep both of these, but we do need to rename them. So I'm going to go to Options, Change Name. And I'm going to call this the Stepping Stone, because it is a stepping stone for us to get our final base. So let's go ahead and rename her just in case if we need her. Options change name. As Stepping Stone. I'm going to go ahead and clear out these other T-Rex babies and I'm going to be left with these two. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. I've gone ahead and cryoed up both of those babies and let's go ahead and throw it out now in front of the Rexes that we need to combine. So here he is. This is our boy, Stepping Stone. And again, this is the combined stamina and the combined melee damage. And this one here is a boy. So if you think about it, we have the stamina and we have the damage on one Rex. So we now no longer need this one. So let's move him out of the way. This is the damage one that I'm currently riding. Because again, the damage is now on this baby boy here that's going to be growing up. The female stamina is also on this baby Rex so we don't need her anymore so let's go ahead and get on her and move her out of the way now let's go back so the last stat that this Rex here is missing is the health so again if you look at the health on her it is 20,000 if you go to the baby it's only 11,000. So I want to take the health off of her and put it onto him. So they need to make a baby together. But first he has to grow up. So we're going to let him grow all the way up. And then this boy, this male stepping stone, can breed with this female right here. And that's why I mentioned 
that I wanted a boy because I knew that it was going to eventually have to breed with her because this is a female. So let's let him grow up. We're going to get a few eggs off of them and then we'll hatch them out together. And that, guys, is our final base. The level of the baby I'm looking for is going to be 431. And there it is, right here on the left. And guys, I know what level I'm looking for because of what level the parents are. So, for example, the level 391 was the level of the stepping stone father, and the health mutation 20 out of 20 was the mother. So, I'm taking 391 and plus 40 levels because, again, the mother health had 20 mutations, and every mutation goes up by two levels. So 20 times 2 is 40, and that gives us 431. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our final base. And I know this without looking at it, but just for the heck of it, look at its stats. 20,000 in health, 3,906 in stamina, oxygen was the exact same as the base mother, Food is the same as the base mother. Weight is the same as the base mother. And again, I don't care about those stats just yet. Melee damage is 860, so there is our high melee damage. And then the invisible movement speed stat. This is a boy. We need to go ahead and rename him. We do need a female. We have to get a female base, but let's go ahead and rename him. Instead of calling him a base male, I highly recommend to all of you to change his name to slightly different. So go to Options, Change Name. And I went ahead and called mine M for male and then Final Base. But we need a female. And yes, for those of you who are looking at the level, I am going to go over this. I'm going to talk about max dino level cap because this level is actually kind of scary how high it is. And I'll go over that in just a second. But first, let's keep breeding those parents together to get our female because we need a boy and a girl for this to work. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a girl. I'm going to go ahead and cryo him up though. And I'm going to put him outside with the rest of them so that he can grow up there. All right, so there is a level 431. Let's go ahead and claim that. See if it's a female. And it is, it is our female. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is our female final base. Go to options, change name. All right, so now we can go ahead and cryo her up. And we can go ahead and put her outside with the boy. My male and female final base has finally grown up. But here's the catch, guys. This really isn't my final base female or male. And it has to do with the level. The level at hatch, you can see, is 431. And this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem for something called max level dino cap. So my T-Rex comes out at 431, and if you look below, I have points available. I can level my T-Rex 73 times. With a regular creature, with a regular type dino, like I have here in front of me, a regular T-Rex, the max level dino cap is 450. Once a dino reaches 450 or higher on official or unofficial servers, some server settings, it will automatically be wiped. It will automatically disappear, and that is a huge problem. So, we have to correct this. But first we have to do some math and we need to understand, well, what is the right level? What is the correct level that my dino should be? So I mentioned that 450 is a dangerous number and your creature will get wiped. Well, we have to do some math here. Let's go to level 449 because that is a safe number. So what we want to do is take 449 and we want to minus 73 points available because that's how many points a regular dino can earn. So 449 minus 73 gives us 376. 
That is the maximum level that you want your final base dyno to be. So mine's 431. How do we do that? Well, we have to do something called backwards breeding. Backwards breeding works like this. You need to lower some of your stats that you have here, and what that's going to do is lower your final level of your dino. So we need to do something called backwards breeding. Now, if you remember, I did a chain for health, stamina, and melee damage. I really don't want to sacrifice any of those stats because I specifically bred in those areas to get mutation. So I'm not going to be sacrificing my melee damage, stamina, or health. I'm going to leave those ones alone. I have to look at some of the other areas. Oxygen, food, weight, and yes, even movement speed. Movement speed is an invisible stat, and there are natural points that go into this when you tame dinos in the wild. Every time that you tame a dino in the wild, you will get a random selection of stat points that go into each area. And here's the thing. Backwards breeding can be done at any stage. It is most highly recommended that you do it with your original base, but I never would have thought that I would have gotten to the point where I had to be concerned about max level dino cap. It can be done at any stage, and I'm going to show you that it can be done even towards the end of the stage here where I am now. But for us to understand how this works, we need to look at our male final base rex in the taming stat calculator. So that's why I recommended that you use Arc Smart Breeder, because it's going to tell us how many points we have in oxygen and how many points we have in movement speed. So we're going to go ahead and put this boy here in the calculator. And you might be wanting to ask, well, how do I lower the level? The easiest way to explain that is we got to go tame some low-level Rexes. But first, let's look at this one's stats here in Oxygen and Movement Speed, because I've already decided that I am going to be lowering my Movement Speed stat and my oxygen stat here so that my dino is below 376. So let's look at him in the calculator to look at his stats. Go ahead and open up our Smart Breeder and then you want to go to Import Exported Data. You want to go ahead and find the creature that you just exported. So right here, my mill, final base, level 431. Copy the values to Extractor and there it is. Now again, you want to be concerned about where it says wild level, and this is where all of your natural points are. So here's the thing. I've already mutated my health, my stamina, and my melee damage. I am not going to be looking at those at all. What I have to look at are the other stats that I can sacrifice, which is oxygen, food, weight, and movement speed. So let's look at these together. You can see right here on the left-hand side, this is where it says wild level. I have 32 points in oxygen, and I have 30 points in movement speed. If you add those together, that gives you 62, and that's going to be a very important number for me when I determine what my final base is going to be. Now, this level is 431, so if you think about this, I am going to be subtracting 62 levels from 431. So 431 minus 62 gives me 369. That means that my final base, once I do this correctly, will be level 369, which is lower than that 376 that I mentioned to you all. So how do we do this? Well, we have to go out and we need to look for as many low-level Rexes as possible. We have to tame as many low-level Rexes as possible. And what we have to look for are zero points in oxygen and zero points in movement speed. And the reason why you want low level creatures is because the higher the level, the more stat points that you naturally get in each area. So tame as many low levels as possible. I'm going to get a T-Rex that has zero points in oxygen and zero points in movement speed. So let's go out and tame as many low level Rexes as possible. I've gone ahead and tamed a bunch of low level Rexes. These ones ranged anywhere from level 15 to 20. And again, guys, you're not looking for a high level Rex. You're looking for the lowest level possible. So you can see that the levels of the Rexes that I've tamed up are really low. In fact, what I had to do to some of them to make sure that they didn't get additional levels when you're taming, like they didn't get the 100% taming efficiency, is I punched the Rex while it was sleeping. So that way it didn't get extra points into each stat. So I've already looked at all of the Rexes available to me at the moment, 
And I found two of them that have zero points in both oxygen and one of them has zero points in speed. So if you look at the stats on this one, this one is my zero points in oxygen and the oxygen is at 150, which is significantly lower than my final base. But again, movement speed is the one that's invisible. This is your invisible wasted stat. It's still going to say 100%, but the only way for us to know this is by extracting their values and putting them in the calculator. So you want to do this as well too. You want to go ahead and export the data for all of your rexes. And yes, I had to do this for every single one of these rexes. I already know that these two have the waste, uh, don't have any points in those because I've checked them all. I've checked every single one of these. And I'm just going to show you what both of those look like in the taming calculator. Let's go ahead and import both of those so I can show you that they both have zero points in that area. Copy the values to extractor and go ahead and add to new library because we're going to be adding in two of them to look at their values. This one before I do though, ladies and gentlemen, is my male zero points in speed. And if you look at all of the points, you're going to notice that they're a lot lower than my other one. And again, guys, it's because it's a low level 20. They're, it's a lower level dino. And again, right here, zero. The wild level, zero points. So it is the lowest it can possibly be. Let's go ahead and add him to a new library. And then let's go back to extractor. And then let's go to import exported data. And let's go to our zero points in oxygen. Copy the values. And this one right here is my oxygen with zero points. These are the wild level points that went into each stat. And here's my oxygen at zero. So I know that I need to use both of those rexes to help my final base out. So let's breed those together. I've gone ahead and pulled aside my zero points in oxygen and my zero points in speed. And you can see that I labeled them M and that means male. Both of these T-Rexes here happen to be male. So I have to breed it with a female. And that's why I told you guys that I wanted to get a female and a male final base. Let's go ahead and pull over our female. A female has to breed with a male. Anytime that you guys are lowering a stat, I highly recommend that you think about what stats you are lowering first. If any of you have decided that you are going to lower your movement speed stat, please save this one for the very last. Because it is an invisible stat and it will be very difficult for you to see it because it's invisible. So we're going to start with oxygen. I am going to lower my oxygen first. So I'm going to get on him, move him a bit closer. And remember, when I looked at my oxygen in the stat calculator, I had 32 points on my final base. My final base had 32 points in oxygen. So he has zero points in oxygen. I'm going to go up to him, behavior, enable mating, he's already on. Go up to her, behavior, enable mating, there we go. Now these two are going to breed together. So because I am lowering my oxygen, on her by 32 points, that means I'm going to be lowering her level by 32 points. So that means that the baby that I'm looking for must be level 399. And when I get that 399, it's important to check its stats and make sure that everything carried over correctly. And again, we're only getting the lower oxygen. So basically, it's going to be the same exact stats as the, as the mother, just with lower oxygen. It's going to have the lower oxygen that the father has. Everything else is going to be the same. So again, it's going to go from 630 in oxygen to 150. So again, the baby we're going to look for is level 399. And I do need the 399 to come out in a female because that baby is then going to have to breed with the next one here. So let's get uh, quite a few eggs off of these two and let's get our level 399. 399 right here. Go ahead and imprint it. And guys, it's very important that even though it is the correct level, you need to check its stats. So go access its inventory and look at the stats. It is a female and we do need a female in order for us to do the next step. It has the correct health, 
20,000. It has the right stamina, 3,906. It has the lower oxygen, which is exactly what we are looking for. It has the correct food, the weight, and the melee damage. But here's the thing. You must check its ancestors to make sure that you have done this correctly. Now, mine says 81 out of 20, and for me, that is 100% correct, because if you do the math and you think about it, I had 41 mutations in melee damage. So 41 right there. Plus, I had 20 mutations that went into stamina, that's 61, and then I had 20 mutations in health, which gives me 81 over 20, which this is exactly what I am looking for. And I'm going to say this, backwards breeding will take you a very long time to do. Ideally, you really should do this when you are doing your first base at the very, very beginning. However, as I was doing this, I never realized that I would reach to the point where I had to be concerned about the max level dino cap. So I'm learning as I'm going and I'm showing you guys how you would correct your problem in case that you came across the same situation that I have. So again, make sure that you are checking the stats and make sure that you are checking the ancestors to make sure that there's no extra bit of mutations that are carrying down. You need to check its stats. So let's go ahead and cryo her up. We're going to get her to grow up, and then we need to breed her with the male zero out of zero points in movement speed so that we can lower her level even further. My female Rex has finally grown up, and it's a very good idea. Again, guys, just double check the stats and make sure it's everything that you are looking for. I have the correct health, stamina, and I do have the lowered oxygen, which lowered her level from 431 to 399. It has the same food, weight, damage, and yes, even movement speed. You're going to have to put yours into the calculator in order to find out whether or not the movement speed got carried over correctly. But movement speed is an invisible stat. So again, that's why you need the ARC Smart Breeder app in order to find out what the movement speed, how many points are in that naturally. And if you go to show ancestors, you can see that I have 81 random mutations on one side. And that is correct for me because I had 41 stat mutations in damage, 20 in stamina, and 20 in health. And if you add all that together, that equals 81. It's a good idea to go ahead and rename her as well, too, so that she has a purpose. So go to options, change name. And she is my female stepping stone. Now, there is one more thing that we need to do. We need to lower her level even further. And I mentioned this, that we need to lower her movement speed. And again, guys, her level, any dino, any regular dino that you are breeding, the final base level when it hatches has to be 376 or lower. And this is to avoid your dino erasing from the whole max dino cap level. So... I'm going to lower her movement speed now. And I wanted a female because I happen to have a male that I found that has zero points in speed. She has 30 points in movement speed. So if you think about this, her level is 399. If I'm trying to put zero points in movement speed, I'm going to lower her level 30 points. So that means that the baby, my final base baby, is going to be level 369. So that is what I'm going to be looking for. And again, this process does take a lot longer because you're only breeding with one dino. And again, guys, doing the backwards breeding is best to do when you are doing your first original base before you do any mutations. But again, this is a learning curve for me, and I'm going to show you guys how to correct this in case you have the same problem as well. So make sure you turn her on enable mating and turn your male on enable mating as well, too. These two here are going to breed up together. And again, I'm going to look for a baby that is level 369, which will be my final base. And I need both a male and a female for this to work. So let's get a few eggs and hatch them out and get our final base. 369 right here. Let's go ahead and claim that. And even though it's the correct level, you still have to check its stats. 
So let's go into its inventory and let's look at its stats. It has the correct health, the stamina, it has the correct oxygen, the food, the weight, and the melee damage. Now again, we cannot see the movement speed, but there's one last thing that we need to look at to make sure that this has gone over correctly, and that is the ancestors. And as you can see here, on the left hand side, you see 81 over 20. And for me, yes, that's correct because I have 41 mutations in damage, 20 in stamina, and 20 in health, which equals out to 81. Now this is a male, and guess what? This is our final base male. We need to go to options, change name. There we are, and I'm gonna call mine male final base do not use. We are not going to use this because when we get our female, we can breed the base male, the final base male do not use with the final base female do not use, and we can create endless babies. With that being said, I will not cuddle this. I will not imprint this dino here because I want the original stats to be as pure and as accurate as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and cryo him up and I'm going to let him grow up and I need to keep breeding those two together to get my female. So I will see you once I get my female. 369. Let's go ahead and claim that. And we need to check its stats. It is a female. It has the 20,000 in health, 3,906 in stamina. It has the correct lower oxygen. It has the right food, weight, melee damage, and movement speed, but movement speed is invisible. We need to check its ancestors to make sure that it has 81 mutations. And there we go, guys. And this is our final base female. We need to go to options, change name. Female final base do not use. Now we can go ahead and cryo her up. And again, I am not going to be imprinting upon her. And we can throw her out with the other male that's outside. My two final, final bases have finally grown up, guys. And now you can see that they are level 369, which is below the 376 level that I needed in order for me to not worry about the max dino level cap. Now, when I go up to each one of these, you can see that their health, stamina, and melee damage is extremely high. They are 0% imprinted, and again, I have the 81 random mutations, and that was from my health chain, from, from my stamina chain, and also from my 41 mutations in melee damage. So 41 plus 20 plus 20 equals 81, and it is the same with both parents. The backwards breeding, like I said, and I mentioned this before, is better done with your base, your original base that you do, but it can be done at any stage. And like I said, I never thought that I would get to this point, but here we are. And this is my final Rex. It is an absolute monster. From here, what I can do is I can go to behavior, enable mating. And now I can breed out disposable level 369 super, super mutated Rexes. And again, these ones are not imprinted. The ones that will hatch from these two final parents will be imprinted, and I will show you what the difference is in their stats. Let's go ahead and get a few eggs off of these, and then we can hatch out a baby. Here is my new baby. I'm going to go ahead and claim this baby Rex and imprint upon it. And when it wants care, in 10 minutes, I am going to imprint this, and I am going to imprint this baby Rex all the way up to 100%, so I can test it out and show you guys what its capabilities are. Let's go ahead and cryo this up, and then I can throw it out when it's matured. My T-Rex has finally grown up. I've gone ahead and renamed her 100% Imprinted Final, because she is my 100% Imprinted Final Rex. I just want to go back over to the, the male final base and show you its stats, and I'm going to compare it over to the 100% imprinted. So just pay attention to its health and its damage. 20,000 in health, 
860 in melee damage, and that's what we end up with, egg hatch with 0% imprinting. When you do imprint it, it goes to 24,000 in health, and it goes to 1,031 in melee damage. And this thing is an absolute monster. I'm going to go ahead and get on her. And I have 73 points available. And I thought just for testing purposes that I would go ahead and put every single point in melee damage. So you can see how much of a wrecking machine this thing is going to be. So in the end, this T-Rex, fully mutated, with 41 points in melee damage, 20 points into health, 20 mutations into stamina, is an absolute monster. I have no doubt that this thing is going to be an absolute boss killer. In fact, I plan on taking this T-Rex here, and many others with the same stats, to the boss fights, testing it out, and seeing what its capabilities are. This has been an incredibly long process, and I thank you all for sticking with this as well too, because like I said, this has taken me several months to complete. I just want to go ahead and test it against something that's wild. There's a T-Rex that's over here, and I just want to see how many bites I can take out this T-Rex and see what level it is as well. One, two, three, four. So four chomps to a level 130. <laughs> That's actually quite good. Holy heck. So like I said guys, getting over 20 mutations in a single stat is definitely a possibility. However, it is going to take you a very long time. And you can see that with all 73 points into my T-Rex, that it goes up to level 442. So I do not have to be concerned about max level dino cap. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please consider liking, subscribing, and hit the bell icon for more notifications of when I upload next. I appreciate you guys sticking with me on this. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.